There was no sound. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's Wandering Dam's channel, but it, it has to happen. It has to happen.
Simon says you're muted again. Sorry. Okay, wait. Okay, can you can you guys hear him now? Prax, please answer me. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, you can hear me. Okay, but not Chris. Okay, so I don't know. That is that is weird. <laughs> that is funny. Um, what did you do? Streamlabs. Simon is saying in Streamlabs. Uh, it might just be that his mic it has might... defaulted to something else for this uh, scene. Did you catch that? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um... Okay, do you want me to talk while you figure this out, I guess? <laughs> okay, hey, I'm Ren. Um, um, yeah, I'm here. I'm going to play a new game that I've never played, so I can't wait. And I'm going to be playing uh, Technica, who looks like a really cool character. Um, yeah, uh, Simon's in back of me getting better. Just letting people know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I play, I'm also in Malifaux and I'm also in Cyberpunk Red, which when the streams come back, it'll be on Wednesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise you can find me on Twitter at Heaven's Night or I'll be in the Twitch chat as uh, Burns Through the Rain. So. Hey, Brax. Um, hey, we can hear you now. <laughs> so. Okay. Except I have an echo now. Ah. We're getting there. This is one step closer. Have the stream open? Like, huh? unmuted? Is the no. stream unmuted for you? No, I've got the site muted, but uh, okay. go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Saverick, and we will I will soldier on. I am. Hi, everybody. I'm Saverick, or Josh. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I guess I'll just say tonight that I'm playing Nox, um, and she interested me because she was very much a Raven-type-esque character, and as much as we were talking beforehand about campiness in, in things, I really like Teen Titans. So, um, something I used to watch with my son all the time, especially Teen Titans, because I watched it all the time with him when he was a, when he was a little baby thing. So, um, it was kind of a, a fondness to me. Um, what do I do? Um, I stream sometimes. That's about all I do. Um, I can't keep talking about myself because I don't know what else to say at this point, so... Well, you're doing a great job. And uh, we'll pass it over to Dave. And Dave, if you want to give us a breakdown of MetaHumans Rising, and um, we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, let, let me also add that our kiddo is in love with Teen Titans Go. Uh, we ha we have not introduced him to the, the older Teen Titans cartoon yet. Uh, <laughs> But uh, that aside, uh, yeah, my name is Dave Silva. I'm the uh, writer of Many Humans Rising. Um, we originally published that. Uh, we're actually coming up on the two-year anniversary. Um, it is a a tribute to classic superhero stories in their various mediums and and uh, the the uh, way we we tell stories. It combines kind of a uh, uh, old school and new, newer concepts for blending narrative and, and sharing narrative, um, along with uh, um, aspects that might be more familiar for, for people who, who uh, I, I almost mentioned cyberpunk, so you know. <laughs> uh, um, what, what do I say? Uh, I'm being tongue tied. <laughs> um, so the. Uh, 
it is a superhero RPG. Um, the game will walk you through creating your own shared universe and um, helping to craft a shared narrative, building team origin, um, and then going out for great justice. <laughs> um, the, the characters that uh, are being played today are part of either the, the signature team of Steel Aces uh, or one of our Hall of Legends characters that was uh, contributed by one of our great Kickstart backers. Um, the, the Steel Aces are kind of our, our signature uh, superhero team. Uh, you can actually see them uh, featured in uh, Chris's background there, uh, along with a couple of villains. And um, uh, yeah. Uh, Excellent. Can, can I say other things? No, I mean, if, if that's good, then that's good. I found my echo issue and I got it sorted. So thanks for stalling. <laughs> Since, uh, you know, I'm super rusty after not having to run production for over a year. Um, uh, well, or, you know, just because I'm a pro like that. Uh, so um, now that you know who we are and what the game is that we're going to be looking at, one thing I do want to point out is that... Um, uh, Dave and MetaHumans Rising does have a Patreon that you can check out, and as part of it, you can um, help them create comics based on the heroes from, well, some of the heroes that you'll see tonight, as well as um, some of, um, well, uh, the heroes in the book itself. So uh, keep that in mind as well, and... Uh, Dave, if you want, you can send me that link and I can put it in chat for everybody. Or you might be able to put it in chat yourself. Uh, Simon may have set up the settings that way. Um, but definitely check them out. So yeah, on we, to what we're uh, doing tonight. I'm sorry, go ahead. I said, take us away. So where 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 are we located, Dave? Um, all right, for the the purposes of our, our test game, um, mm -hmm. let us uh, let us assume a a, a city. Um, I like to call it Central City. Um, it, it has a, a waterfront. Uh, it has a number of museums. Uh, there's a tech sector. There, there's other aspects to to the city. Uh, it's a thriving metropolis, not metropolis, um, somewhere in America, <laughs> um, to keep things simple. Um, there, there are other members of your team, but, but all of them are, uh, you know, there, there, there are superhero duties that, that must be done. And uh, currently, you, you are the, the ones to answer the call, as it were. Um, uh, we will uh, uh, start this very simple uh, by saying that um, either through your monitoring or, or just listening to the news, uh, you become aware of uh, strange happenings at a local museum, uh, specifically uh, uh, the, uh, the, the History Museum. Uh, uh, when a something that looks like a, a giant um, tank burrows its way out of the the earth and um, and uh, yeah people start running because that should not happen and uh, <clears throat> uh, shortly thereafter uh, um, men with, you know, uh, in, in military style uniforms and, um, um, uh, guns begin like flooding out from this, this large burrowing tank. Um, if, uh, they, the uniforms have a, a distinct, um, similarity to uh, 
uh, a certain faction from World War II, although it is slightly different. And then uh, if anyone, and we'll, we'll, we'll start this off by just a simple die roll, right? Uh, so we can just show, get everyone kind of familiar with, with how dice work, right? Um, so let's see if you guys know anything about this group or have seen them before, interact with them before. So uh, we're gonna use your wisdom, all right? And then if you have a talent that you feel would fit this role, um, take a look, right? And, and you know, just go ahead and tell us what that talent is, right? Um, bulwark, if, if you're here, um, this actually ties into your, your catalyst. So you can, you can use that as part of your, you roll your wisdom and your catalyst for this. So. Um, gotcha. I have reformed criminal and as a background and I also, uh, what was it? I just read this and then I completely lost it. Uh, criminal underworld as a talent. Okay. Would those both apply or? Let's see here. Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, the way we we, uh, we we build our dice pool, we have a, a static modifiers like your attribute and your talents. Uh, and then for each category, you get to add a die, right? So you have a background and a study. Those are both talents. So you're going to roll three dice plus your, your static values. Okay. That is five. 13 and 9, so 22. And three dice. Also, let me know if you get a six, because sixes are important. I got a 31. Okay. So. Do you want us each to go around? Yeah, yeah. Let, just so everyone gets an idea of how to, how to roll. Okay. Here. Rin, you want to go next? Okay, so I was looking at, she has education in her background. Okay. I don't know if that would cover it. And... No, um, since we, well, um, you can definitely, like, I, I will say from the education, you definitely know that, like, this is clearly, like, a Nazi uniform that's been modified somehow, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. But this is more of... Do you know who these people are today? And I'm not sure education will cover that. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, so That's yeah, why you, I wasn't yeah. sure 100%. Um, otherwise. Um, sorry, I'm just. Maybe computers, but I'm a little iffy on that one. So I'd probably just go with wisdom. Yeah. So you're uh, that's all right. Um, yeah. This is just a warm up roll, and mm -hmm. uh, so you're just going to roll your wisdom and two dice. Okay, wisdom two dice. Uh, and I got a six. So and it's eighteen in all. Okay. And then. Let's get a roll from Chris, and then I'll, I'll talk okay. about what the results be. So wisdom is eleven. Um, my catalyst is an eight, so that's nineteen. And then, um, would this be either uh, fall for talent? Would this fall into potentially, depending on the organization, the the occult or see past the grime? Uh, so see past the grime is actually especially for perception. Oh, okay. Sorry. But yeah, I see that connected now. That's what the S meant. I thought that was um, um, secondary skill. Gotcha. Uh, or support skill. Sorry, that's what I meant. Okay. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Does this fall into a cult? Otherwise, I just have the other two, which is fine. Uh, well, I want to make a fool society comment here. Uh, it doesn't really fall into a cult. Okay. No worries. Uh, then we'll go with those. That gives me uh, three dice, correct? Yes. Plus 19. That's going to be, let's see here. Good. 
Eight, so 27. Okay. And did you get any sixes? No sixes. Okay. All right. So when we're making a basic die roll like this, if you get the six, it, it elevates your successes, right? So like a failure becomes a partial success, partial success becomes a full success. A full success gets an extra degree of success and more information. Okay. Um, so all of you have heard about this faction before. Um, they uh, call themselves the Eisenreich uh, or the Iron Empire. Um, they are um, holdouts who, who literally went underground during World War II. Um, hint, hence the drilling tank things. Uh, and then uh, Bulwark, uh, you know that they have an interest in um, anything that can grant power quickly. Um, uh, Nox, your perspective is more that um, they are like they target metahumans who have tangible things that can be taken away from them right but it, it's it's kind of in that same vein like they they want power they want it quickly and they're going to uh target where they can get those resources that are already prefab or or, or ready to go for them right um and then on top of that Knox, um uh, what you know or what, what you heard uh, in addition to that, <clears throat> is that it's actually not related to them directly, um, but the museum that they're attacking actually just brought in a number of artifacts from other countries. Um, and so that, putting those two things together, you're like, okay, something bad's happening here. <laughs> Just to be like, sort of like campy, comic booky. Do you have like a newspaper around? You know, that says like, you know, museum showing new, blah blah blah. All right. So, um, I am I am generally in the if it makes sense to be in the scene, say yes. Uh, that's actually baked into the rules. Uh, there, there's also uh, serendipity, which is um, if if the GM doesn't describe something in a given scene, right? But it makes sense, but it's not a guaranteed thing to be in there. You can make a fortune roll to to have it be there for you. Okay. But in this case, uh, I I sort of refer to this as the the diehard rule, or when you need a um, a uh, a fire hose on the top of a building, and the GM did not say it was there. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, um, yes, we, we will say there is a newspaper um, uh, nearby. Um, and uh, the, uh, the the big artifact in the the uh, the the article that they're talking about is. Um, the Immortals Cube, uh, which which comes from ancient Greece, uh, it is a a uh, uh, a, a bronze cube with uh, highly intricate engravings on all six sides, and that's that's what the newspaper is kind of like featuring, um, and they. The, the name is actually, like, I, I'm going to mispronounce this because I don't actually speak Greek, but uh, it, it's the uh, Ambrotos uh, Kubos, um, but it translates to the Immortal Skew. <laughs> um, and so you're like, okay, this is this is clearly what they have to be after. Yeah, it's like one of those like, big eye roll moments, like, oh, why do they bring these things here? I... It's just like a big target. <laughs> they they should just put notes on there. No actual magical powers. <laughs> so 
big disclaimer. Yeah. Been vetted by other sorcerers. Please do not attack us for this. Unfortunately, they did not get that memo. Attacks are happening. Portal cube does not actually make you immortal. It may cause drowsiness. Okay. So we know where we need to go. Yes. Besides the big tanks coming out of the ground. Um, so, um, I will just kind of flash forward to to uh, your arrival on the scene. Uh, if if you guys want to describe what that looks like, um, I, uh, two of you have some rather unique methods of of uh, transportation, and then. Uh, depending on on how you see Technica, you can probably catch a ride, or you probably have like a motorcycle or something along those lines as well. Um, I'll probably, uh, yeah, I'll probably be on the motorcycle, and uh, I'll drive onto the scene on my motorcycle. Okay. Trying to scope out scene, looking around, trying to. I don't know, see if there's people, if there's like, um, um, wow, words, oof. If people are fleeing the scene, if there's like other bad guys in other, ouch, areas, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so what about uh, the Bulwark and Knox? What, what does that look like when you guys arrive? And I, I, I'll, I'm going to answer your questions. I just want to get everyone's like, uh, you know, what, what's, what's it look like when the group gets here? I know with Nox, uh, she is just surrounded like this thing of shadow stuff. So sort of like she glides across the air and as she gets closer to the ground, it sort of like spreads out like undulating like a spider's legs, which just sort of like carries her to the ground finally. It just sort of like a memento of her like unseedy past. Uh, hard to break old habits uh, to like come in and look menacing and powerful. I respect this. I think Bulwark is going to um, come through in. Um, sort of the same way that the uh, Eisenreich did underground and use his ability to connect with the earth and kind of travel through and then pop up. Um, I won't say in the middle of them, but kind of in the middle of things. Okay. So, so we have, uh, all right. So the three of you kind of like converge onto the scene um, and I'm bullying, the, I'm burning the willpower to be able to do that. Uh, uh, that's actually like a uh, uh, part of your core power. Like, oh, okay. Uh, so, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about willpower shortly, uh, but that is just something Bulwark can do. <laughs> cool. Uh, I think you can also see through stone as well. Um, but, uh, um, which helps when you're traveling underground too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. So the, the three of you arrive on the scene. Uh, most of the civilians have cleared out, uh, and you can see some like wounded guards and and uh, people who, who didn't get out of the way fast enough, um, like trying to to extricate themselves from the scene. Uh, you guys, being the heroes that you are, of course, have arrived before the police. Right. Um, and so there is this uh, uh, this question. You don't see any of the Eisenreich outside, other than the tank, which means that they have probably gone in. Um, but. Uh, this does put Bulwark in a rather interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. Because that's a museum and you're a living volcano. Yeah. Let's 
So you can just take the tank, right? Yeah. That I can. I mean, I could play with it. Oh, that too. That's even a better idea. <laughs> Why slag it if you can repurpose it, huh? Oh, the things I could do with the tank. <laughs> All right. What so, kind of building insurance does the museum have? Uh, I I don't think I can answer that. Question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, things that I can say. Uh, it is uh, an elegant building. Um, you know, it of course holds relics from from centuries past, from different countries around the world. Um, uh, they must have some form of insurance, but priceless, priceless relics can't be replaced. Right? That makes sense. Um, I, I will say in the meta, um, some games discourage uh, splitting the party. Um, we embrace comic book tropes, and that is something that happens. Right. I think I'm going to take a look inside. I can stealth in and sort of know with the shadows and get an idea of what's going on inside. That would be good. I figure they have to, they have an exit strategy. They're not going to stay in there forever. So I'll jab a thumb over my shoulder at the tank. Yeah, I'm going to take care of that. I will focus on the tank. All right. So let's do this so we can we can track everybody. Um, if you if you look on your your second page, it, when I say second page, I mean the like you have like a your your narrative in the the front, but I mean the second page of like stats and stuff, right? Uh, we we kind of noted down some like important values that come up a lot, like initiative. <laughs> um, I'm going to have you guys roll that now so I can just kind of track a turn order in my head. Right. Uh, and because we're, we, uh, we have at least one person staying out, one person going in. Uh, Bulwark, which way are you going to go? Oh, I'm not going inside. So um, I'll, be, I'll be outside. All right. Yeah. So if you take a look at it, um, you should see your initial list. It should be like the the very top. Mm -hmm. Does this does does, does rolling sixes for this have any effect at all for initiative? Uh, yes, it does. Since you're going uh, inside, why don't you take the lead, Knox? I rolled a forty-four initiative with a six. Nice. So gain a free willpower for that. Hey. I will not argue that. Technica? I have 38. No sixes. OK. And I have 29 with a six. So gain a willpower for that. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to say this as a nebulous statement. If we end up in a fight, like if that happens at some point, uh, we actually work out, out of slowest to fastest because superheroes stop bad things from happening. So I have to describe the bad thing from happening first. And then you guys can say, wait, I'm going to try and prevent that from happening. Like it. Right. Oh, right. <clears throat> but with that said, let me. Uh, let me just make a quick little in the background here. You guys don't have to. Don't worry about anything that might be happening over here.
Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, Bulwark, you, you stay outside. You're keeping watch, or is there something you're actively doing? Uh, Bulwark's going to keep watch, actually looking looking down, trying to track where the tunnel came from. Not like going all the way there, but kind of following that pathway to see if it's just the one tank, if um, um, if it's connected to some sort of, of network uh, that they popped up out of, um, that that kind of idea. Did they come up out of the sewers and just drill their way up, or... Did they find some other way? Perfect. All right. So go ahead and you're going to roll your um, sense plus okay. your power because you have that augmented uh, sensory ability. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you have perception, which I think you do, you can yep. have that as well. So sense is five, perception, nine, 14 plus power. That's 26. And that's. Four dice, correct? Yes. And that is, what did I say? Uh, 26 plus 36, 41 with a six. All right. So it looks like they, except for the last maybe 20 meters, were moving almost straight up, right? Um, so they probably have some kind of seats with harnesses uh, so they can be vertical like that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but uh, looking down, you, you, you can't quite see far enough, but you, you have to assume that it eventually either slopes in some direction or, or they just they made straight lines. Um, 20, um, 20 meters isn't that far movement wise, though, is it? No, no, just uh, what I'm saying is that, that it slopes from being a direct straight line up mm -hmm. to just curving to, to burrowing up and out. Well, I'm just no. wondering, like, if I use my action to, uh, so I look down, but if I just drop down now that I've looked first. Yeah. Is that, go like, it's not going to keep me, like, I'm not going to take, like, six rounds to pop back out kind of thing. No, 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 no. Uh, so we, we abstract a, a lot of movement. So we have mm -hmm. close, short, medium, long. Uh, okay edge of combat as ranges, right? And it takes you a turn to move between inch increment unless you want to try and sprint. Gotcha. Uh, <clears throat> which you can you can do it in an action. It just It leaves you kind of exposed to danger. Okay. Yeah. Um, would this fall into the short or medium? Um, so dropping down 20 meters? Like, yeah. That, that would actually just be going short range. Okay. Then that's what I'm going to do, like, to finish off what I'm doing. If, since I've looked already, I'm just going to go down and position myself wherever it changes. So. Okay. Um, some other things that we'll say is <clears throat> it looks like the, uh, the drill is uh, designed to be, like, angular or, or angled. Uh, as necessary to control the direction that it's moving once it's underground. Right? Nice. Uh, you, you can tell that when, uh, just by the way that the, the borehole looks. That'll make for some neat toys with Technica. Speaking of which... I get to have fun. <laughs> what absolutely horrible things are you planning here? Okay, um, oh, there's so much. <laughs> okay, basically, I want to make sure that they can't run away with it ever again. Um, that's, that's the first major thing. And then I want to see if I can uh, put it to use for myself. Like, could I use it against them? Um, either remote control or... Just looking at the controls and everything, looking at the setup, seeing what the technology is and everything, just trying to figure out, is there a way I can remote control it and use it against them as a, or is it better that I just take it all apart and just so that it, I cancel out the movement completely so that 
um, it becomes a lump of metal <laughs> that I can salvage later. Well, that is a great question. So you actually have, as part of your, your tech mind power, the ability to control machines. <laughs> so this is a machine. Uh, you're going to roll your intelligence and your tech mind plus three dice. And let, let's see how that works out. Now, uh, the way control works is you need degrees of success. The less the object or less the target wants to do a thing, the more degrees you need, right? OK, so Intel, Tech, and 3. OK. Uh, I got 41 in all, no sixes. All right. So, with that, um, a few things become readily apparent. One, there is a crew inside. Uh, you know this because they're touching buttons, and you can feel the buttons through your your uh, tech mind, right? Uh, two, even with them inside and actively trying to subvert your abilities, you could probably get this thing to do what you want it to do, um, short of, um, like firing the main cannon. Uh, and then three, I'm going to go back to just noting that there are people inside and uh, they become aware of you. <laughs> so think about oh, that. Of course. And let me check in on Knox. Knox, I'm going to just, I'm not going to ask you for a stealth roll because we know you're stealthier than they can perceive. Okay. All right. <laughs> we got like 4d6 already for it, too. Okay. <laughs> The thing is, I, I, I know what you're up against, and even if you rolled all ones, they're not going to notice these shadows on the wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, surprisingly, inside, very few things are harmed, right? Uh, because you check the newspaper, you kind of know where they're headed, right? Um, and there is, um, one guy, uh, so you, you have like a, a, a series of rings, uh, like step down into, a uh, almost like an inverted podium with, um, with a display in the center, um, Kind of like an auditorium style set up here. Okay. And there you have, uh, uh, there, there's uh, members of the Eisenreich all in this area, but at the, the center, um, they have removed the protective shielding. And you can see that this one, this one person who's wearing uh, what looks more like an officer's uniform, trying to manipulate this device somehow. Hmm. So is, is stealthing and going in here, is that like sort of my action for the turn then? You can still take an action. Because okay. should I just like, just go all out and just start attacking things? Or what? <laughs> we have a, a supposed uh, lieutenant or whatever we'll call this person. Um, I can strike from the shadows, correct? Uh, absolutely. Uh, one thing I, I will remind you, because you're playing Nox, mm -hmm. uh, it's usually a good idea to lay down some cover shadow first. Oh, good. Okay, then. 
So basically, you you will extinguish any light in the room using your your uh, your powers if that's what you choose to do. Yeah, I mean, you know this better than I do. <laughs> so let's do that. Um, so sort of that uh, nightcrawler type of wisping that just sort of like escapes her and begins to because the shadows originate from Nox, if I'm reading this correctly. So just sort of like up under her cloak and just surrounding the room and just like the lights. Pff, pff, pff. All right. So let us find out a little bit more about this tank and being aware of the lone hero above ground. Um, Sorry, Technica, I didn't try to make you bait. <laughs> That's okay. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're going to do violence. <laughs> uh, um, they, they, they're not going to try and shoot you with a, a, uh, a tank cannon, right? But the 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 burrow tank has like little side lasers that they're gonna point at you to to do things with. So, here's what I want to remind you about. So, you have the ability to control the tank, right? And I'm going to assume you don't want to be shot by lasers. No, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, instead of like trying to like dodge out of the way or like somehow block the attack, you can actually try and take control and circumvent the, the laser blast. Just, no, that's not gonna happen to you, right? Shut that system down. Um, to do that, it's actually the same role you made before, okay? Um, but you're trying to interrupt their action, okay? So you'll, you'll take a, a minus 10 penalty, right? Um, and if you beat their role, uh, they will not be able to shoot you, okay? Uh, so I, I am now going to talk about willpower. <laughs> uh, in the in the folder that I showed earlier, there's a little uh, document that's called uh, I think it just says Willpower Features. Uh, yeah, Meta Humans Rising Willpower Features, which is a, a quick breakdown of different things that you can spend willpower on. One of them is just to double whatever you roll on your dice. It costs you one willpower to do that. Um, and other things that you can do are like modify your power to do other things. Uh, or pull in talents that may help you in this situation, right? So depending on how you picture Technica doing her thing, it could just be uh, sheer power where you explode a die roll or your engineering knowledge and like how how the mechanics of the, the vehicle work, right? You spend a willpower and you can use your engineering and, and support your role that way, right? You can spend two willpower and do both, right? It is really, and I'm not saying you have to spend willpower, it's just this is my opportunity to explain willpower. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, okay, and the amount of willpower that Technica has? She has six. She has six, okay, so it is six. All right, let's write that down. Okay, cool. Um, all right, I think I will use one willpower, because why not, let's try it. And I would use engineering to back up, back me up on basically, Perfect. yeah, go ahead. So that will offset the penalty. And because you're using a talent, it gives you an extra die. Ooh. Cool. So do you want me to roll now and then explain or? Yeah, you're going to roll. I've already okay. rolled for them. Okay. Uh, and so you're just rolling it. Yeah. Uh, 
and now I do add the 10 from engineering to uh, my intel and tech mine, right? Yes. Okay, so... 51. All right, perfect. <laughs> All right, so describe what it looks like when you force their laser to not shoot you. Is it, does it like get redirected? Does it, does it not fire? What, how does that work? Um, okay. Uh, uh, what I was picturing was Technica would like, just like stand there looking at them and like right cock and eyebrow as, as if saying like, really? And on the inside, you see uh, the one who's controlling the lasers. Um, I had the idea that the uh, circuit board where the buttons were and everything um, would actually in turn zap him instead and just like make him like press the wrong button and the laser would shoot off towards the side of Technica. It wouldn't go at her. All right, so he gets kind of like a little, little feedback jolt and like, ah! Yeah. And then it fires wildly. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Inside the museum, uh, through the darkness, you can see uh, this this leader open up one side of the cube. And he says something in German. And uh, the, the soldiers are all already on guard, but they're, they start sweeping the, the area um, looking for you or looking for Knox to be specific here. Um, but uh, as, as you have not done something violent, they, they don't know where to shoot yet. <laughs> we could change that if we'd like to. Um, well, we're going to get there. Yeah. Let me uh, let me check in on Bulwark first. Once Bulwark, I guess, reaches um, that uh, like the that whatever turn in the in the tunnel to figure out if they went down further or came across straight, that kind of idea, um, he'd return up. And basically right underneath the tank and lifting it above his head. Okay. All right. So let's let's do some big lifts for, for Bulwark. So first thing, we, we need to clo close the range increment, which normally takes a full turn, but we need to do it in one action because we need another action to lift. Okay. All right. So that's going to be sprinting. Um. So you have a volcanic body of 12 and a movement power, right? Which mm -hmm. is your earth power, right? Which means you're going to get to add your dexterity plus your power to the roll. Okay. Right. Uh, if you have a movement uh, talent, you could add that also, but full work does not. Right. Um, <clears throat> but you're going to roll. Uh, so yeah, roll your dexterity plus volcanic body. Um, if you roll over 20, you're able to close the distance. So it's going to be pretty simple. Don't, don't roll it too. Okay. Wait. You can't roll a two. No. Right? So you don't have to worry about rolling. You do this. Okay. All right. Cool. That's out of the way. Uh, now let's talk about lifting heavy things. This is a tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to use your strength. We're going to use your brawn talent. Mm -hmm. okay. And then does your volcanic body uh, support your strength? Yes, it does. Yeah. You get to add your volcanic body. All right. That's going to give you those three talents plus four dice. Right, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you one more thing. So Braun has this fun kicker that if you spend a willpower to explode your dice, you can actually plus five to your roll. Well, I was planning on exploding the dice anyways, um, because yeah, that just seems fun. So let's see how this works. So uh, as well, four dice, forty six. Um. Quick question. Uh, overcome the oppression of fear. Does that play a role at all in this? Not yet. But okay. depending on how the scenario plays out, it might. Okay. 
So that is 15 plus 27. What, 32, 41, 41. Um, and that's a exploding dice. I forgot to read what that means. Um, uh, double the value of the dice. Oh, double the value of the dice. So that would be another uh, 15. So 56. All right. <laughs> Oh, with a six. There was one six in there. Okay, perfect. Tanks are heavy. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. So, so, so you you call on your 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 inner might, and uh, how are you lifting this? Like, well, is it just straight up, and they're they're remaining, like, uh, kind of on the same kind of position? Are you like lifting it from the back end up so that the the drill is facing towards the sky? Um, what, what I think Bulwark's going to do is um, he's going to come up right underneath it, and as he comes out of the ground and reforms, um, activating the magma blood that he has, heating up, he'll grip the uh, axles, uh -huh. one in each hand. Um, that control the the treads and kind of use them as uh, you know tw well yeah um bending them uh, as he lifts it straight up above his head and then setting it basically on its back end setting on its back end so um, so the the drill is facing up gotcha all right, that, that's, I, I thought that's what you meant. I just wanted to make sure. Yep. Right. Also, blocking that door. <laughs> oh, is that the door? That was a door. A door. Okay. There's other doors, but when you're facing straight up, that's the easiest one to get to because you just fall. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Technica, you, you have one action left. Okay, so the tank's on its back end. Yeah. So it's really not going to go anywhere at the moment. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, where would be the other door? Would it be on the top of the tank? Uh, there, there are doors on the side, kind of in the middle of it. Okay. And then there's like um, okay. pop-out lasers on either side of those doors. Okay. And are those doors... Uh, electric or manual? Ooh, um, because I'm a bad person, I'm going to say electric. Okay, cool. So, basically, because they're basically incapacitated, in a way, I'm going to make sure that the doors cannot be opened at all, and I want to make sure that the drill can't turn or move or anything, so, like, they can't try and use it to try and get the tank back on its oh like the right to, end like angle the drill and and roll the treads so that it it, it uh yeah is it, yeah yeah All exactly right. so another aspect of technica's power is you have this altar of machines uh mm -hmm. which has you can make them better or worse i think this is definitively making them worse okay. so you're just going to roll your intelligence plus tech mind again okay uh, don't, don't mind. Plus two dice, right? Three dice. Three dice. Oh. Okay, so 30. 45 with a six. Okay. So, pretty straightforward there. It, it's, uh, the, the doors have been magnetically sealed and the drill is offline. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's let's drop back into the museum, Knox. Yes. So I, we have some people coming to look for me. 
Um, well, they're trying. They're trying to look Failing, good. but they're trying. My question is, is could I forego them to the person with the cue? Because that's obviously the most important part of this. So, here is um, a fun, like, when you say forego, can you be more specific? I don't want to assume what you mean. I just want to, I, I, I don't want to mess with those people because they're not important to really the, the scene. Um, at least to Knox, they're not. Um, I know the goal is the cube, so that's what I want to get a hold of. Yeah, you can slip by them completely if you wanted to. Okay. So he's already got one side open. Um, so I think my goal would either be to take possession of that, or at least like slap it out of his hand, like no, <laughs> kind of deal. Okay. So we're gonna try and disarm him, and if you roll high enough, you'll you'll take possession. Okay. So for this. <clears throat> pretty straightforward we're just going to make your regular attack roll right at a minus 10 it's not going to do any damage but it's going to work as a disarming roll uh, so you're, you're going to roll the uh, the blades in the darkness okay that's what I was going to ask uh, that's 5 dice is that correct and so five dice plus 42? Yes. Uh, well, uh, 32 because you're at a minus 10 for trying to disarm. Oh, correct. Okay. Right. <laughs> Interesting. Um, <clears throat> 32, 34, 36, 39, 45, 51. So that's 51 with two sixes. With, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It, it, it's quite all right. Uh, d describe to me what it looks like to 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 take a um, uh, a lollipop from a child. Okay, so I would imagine like it's, Nox is just like this bleak black shadow descending upon this poor soul, and it's just like two blazing red eyes and like a crooked grin suddenly appears in front of him, and she like leashes out with these these like almost like shadow tendrils that just wrap yes. around and like rip the cube from him and she like sort of like lifts a finger and weighs it as she holds onto the cube with her free hand all right so i i'm going to take their one action now uh now that they know where you are because you're holding the cube um but they're in your shadow so they're at a penalty to do whatever they're doing but I am going to try and like do violence. <laughs> okay. Um, Does my stealth hiding combat come into play at all in this? Uh, so, um, the, the, you know what? I'm sorry. You're right. You're you're not doing damage. Uh, you can just use those two sixes to automatically hide again. Okay. <laughs> So it just sort of like slaps it, like waves her finger, and all of a sudden she's just poof. Yeah, and she's gone. So I, I will not be doing violence to you because they, they still don't know where you are. I'm you, not upset about this. You, you have one more action. Oh, okay. Um, can I just sort of like fly to the ceiling in this dark room and just try to like make my distance away from them? Is that possible? Uh, let's take a quick look at your power uh, and see if that's going to be a sprint action or if that's a normal movement for you. Um, yeah, so that, that would be a sprint action because you don't have um, uh, rapid acceleration in your power. Um, so it would be your dexterity plus your power. So you're, you're automatically going to make the roll. If they could see you and attack you, they would use your surprise defense. They can't see you right now. Okay. So... Uh, super safe for you to do this. Okay, perfect. All right, so... Huh. This is, this is really sad. The guys in the tank can't do much of anything. Um, uh, since Technica is pretty much 
or Technica is, is, uh, owns the tank at this point, uh, you know that uh, they have gotten out of their chairs and they're they're trying to get purchase to get to the doors, right? And finding out that the doors will not open, right? Uh, inside the museum, uh, there is like frantic shouting in, in German. Um, and uh, uh, about five of the, the uh, Eisenreich soldiers are going to, to head out of the museum since they, they just don't know where Knox is. Uh, Bulwark, what are you what are you doing? Well, uh, um, since there are, I'm guessing, armed combatants exiting, I will position. Uh, Bulwark will move to intercept and position himself in the way. Um, so there's not easy line of sight on Technica at this point. He doesn't really care if they can see the tank because they're it's handled for now. Um, but yeah, kind of providing cover, so to speak. And then he'll. Well, let's see. Would would seeing them at this point and noting knowing that they are the Eisenreich as the um, and his past. With the Eisenreich, have any sort of effect on this character? So, the um, the uh, um, what was I gonna say? So to to talk about um, Bulwark and his past really quick, um, uh, they they actually have had a previous encounter, um, and that that's why this is coming up. Mm -hmm. um the the uh the overcoming of oppression um the 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 trick is you guys have like so thoroughly trounced them so far they 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 can't do much of oppressing yet <laughs> true i just didn't know if like personality wise if it would have any effect on the the person um so i as far as like personality and like how you're interpreting it like uh, mm -hmm. that is that is all for you okay um now the the one thing um i think is is uh interesting is you have this drive which is prove i'm no monster mm -hmm. right? and the fact that you're staying out of the museum right yeah uh we'll go ahead and we're going to give you a willpower for for avoiding going into the museum well, and you know, keeping yourself out and protecting those artifacts from your own abilities. And and, and I'm going to take it w one step further um, and try and channel a little bit of the the gold and silver age that came before um, mm -hmm. to to lean into this prove I'm no monster. And Bulwark's going to look at them, look at the tank, look back at them, like like a little gesticulate a little over dramatically. And say, just give up. Giving them a chance to surrender. All right. Uh, and that's all he's going to do for this this time round. All right. Uh, why don't you give me a uh, a mental plus intimidation? Okay. We could call that etiquette, but I think intimidation is, is a little bit more fitting since you have just like uprooted their tank. Yeah, okay. And that's going to be 25. All right. Uh, so, so Technica, I, I will give you, or Technica, I, I will give you the, the, the inside scoop because, well, you can watch through the cameras. Um, they're going to stop trying to come out. <laughs> they are going to stay in their little uh, metal shell and avoid the rock monster. <laughs> um, it, it's uh, but yes, while they were trying to get out before, they they have been dissuaded from that action. 
All right. Uh, speaking of which, Technica, you are... It's your action. What do you want to do? Okay, so them being taken basically care of for now. Yeah. Um, do I see the ones coming... Sorry, I have a cat here. Do I see the ones coming from the museum? Uh, it's more that you can hear them coming hear them. towards the entrance of the museum. They're, they're not out yet. They're not out yet. Okay. Yeah. Um... Like they had to cover some distance. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I look around, is there any other electronics, anything I could grab to use to maybe make a wall of protection for myself and maybe make some uh, grunts? Some... Uh, okay. So you, you, uh, you basically start by making the grunts and then the grunts make the wall for you. Okay. Uh, is, is the way that works. Okay. And yeah, you basically can just start disassembling the tank. Okay. That's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's that's just a thing that's going to start to happen. Um, Does that make these heavy metal grunts? <laughs> oh, I, I I think that is a clear yes. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, uh, essentially, like bits and bobs of the outer shell of the tank just start removing themselves. And and uh, reassembling themselves, like wires are coming together to to make these little like laser pothead domed uh, grunts. Um, and and uh, you you end um, it takes like I said like it's gonna take your full turn, but you end up with a, a few of them kind of like assembling themselves from the the external parts of the tank, and you have enough to create a wall if you need to. Um, or you can just continue to to grow your army the next turn if that's what you choose to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, yep. So let me jump back in to talk about Knox. What's going on? I have what I need here. So, um, so they're all starting to, to flee outside. Is that correct? Half of them did. Half of them did. Um, hmm. Well, we can't let them escape. Uh, are they heading out to the front, like where I assume the rest of my group is at? Or... Yes. Perfect. That's amazing. Um, this was something I could intimidate the rest of them out of here. <laughs> um, I don't know that I can, though. I have this cube. Um, you said it's one side is open on it, correct? So if yeah. I'm looking at this, is it just like, is there anything happening with it, or? Uh, so, so if you can picture like, have you ever seen those like uh, paper cutouts that you can fold into different shapes? Mm -hmm. Right. Imagine that, but made out of brass. Okay. Right. Um, and the way it happens is by sliding and manipulating the, the various um, carvings. The carvings are actually just really held a really well um, designed uh, gears and levers that have been integrated into the, the shape of it. So it has to be manipulated into a certain shape to open or close it. Gotcha, gotcha. Right? Gotcha. And so he was able to figure out how to open the first of the panels. Mm. All right, and that, that's what you can get from looking at it. Okay, uh, can I just like tuck this somewhere away? And um, I am on on the ceiling of this place currently, like floating there. So yeah. um, can I just like drop down on this this the smarter person, I suppose, since he can manipulate this so quickly, um, and just sort of get us a drop on him, and maybe we can you know force some sort of morale here, you know, as their leader is going down. Um, that's my plan, at least. Yeah. So, um, just to, to talk a little bit about uh, Noctis' abilities, mm -hmm. um, her blades are not like a sword, right? right? Her blades are like the shadows that are around come to life and become sharp and stick people. Right? So you don't even have to drop if you want to like inflict harm upon this guy. Okay. Um, he, he is surrounded in darkness, and you can make all that darkness paint. Oh, okay. 
Um, I saw the range was short on it, so I thought maybe I needed to get a little closer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so while we abstract range increments, you can think of it as like um, close range is you know, maybe to the end of the room, what what you could reasonably close distance on um, in one comic book panel. <laughs> okay. Right? Maybe 10 to 15 meters. Uh, and then short range is about that same uh, increment again, and then we kind of like double it for medium and double it again for long. Okay. Right? So it's just, you know, how long would it take for me to like draw you going from here to there? And if it doesn't take very long, eh, that's just close range, and we're we're gonna let that happen because we need uh, panels to be dynamic and things to happen, you know, because heroes do fun things when they attack. Okay, so let's put this cube away quickly, and and as I'm doing that, the shadows around him begin to whip around at his feet and lash out like whips upon him. All right. So this is this is where we will go to your your blades in the darkness again, All right? And this time you actually are rolling for damage. Um, now, Heavy Blow is a combat maneuver that lets you trade accuracy for more damage. And that's, those are the numbers in the parentheses, uh, if that's something you want to do. Uh, the reason why we call it out is because if, uh, if Nox is doing that, it's against someone's surprise defense, okay. um, and which is typically lower than regular defense. Okay. Um, yeah, let's try it. Let's see what happens. So I still roll five dice, correct? Yes. And what, what? Do I add to this then? I have 32 slash 22. I'm not sure which one of those. Uh, you just tell me which one you're going to add. 42, 32, or 22. Uh, we're doing the heavy blow. Um, yeah. So let's do the 32. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's... 42. 50. 54 with one, sec one six. All right. Uh, so the six gives you uh, an extra two damage, right? Uh, and because he's disoriented from the shadows, that's an extra five damage. So that's 11 plus two plus five, so 18 damage. And let's see how he looks. <laughs> All right. So so the, these tendrils kind of like swirl around his feet and like become whipping out at him uh, from all directions. And uh, he uh, he howls in pain, like trying to protect himself, uh, you know, putting his arms up and, and falling to his knees um, uh, be before. Uh, uh, and he like, he uh, he pulls out like a, a combat knife. He like swings it wildly, but he's swinging at shadows and it means nothing to you. Right before he finally collapses, and the the remaining people in the room, they can't exactly see this, but they hear it. You have one action. Just because I think it'd be kind of like funny slash intimidating. Um, and I don't know if I can do this or not, but could I just like have one of these these tendrils like wrap around like his legs and like pull him up into the ceiling towards me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um like I I think because he's uh he he's knocked out, we're not gonna have to worry about like uh willpower or anything like that. Like normally doing stuff like that would be like on an altar power, mm -hmm. but we're good. Right. <laughs> this is just for dramatic effect at this point. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Just for the narrative. That's all. Yeah. So no problems at all. Like that's just a thing that's going to happen. But that that will be your second action. It's like he collapsed to the ground, and then his his, uh, his troops see him just lifted into the air. All right. <clears throat> so we will we will jump back to the the oblivious uh, Eisenreich who are coming out of the building and don't know the horrors that just happened inside. Um, they see Bulwark ready for them. Um, they are going to try and fire on you um, because, well, you're a giant lava man, right? 
It's um, not my most common, you know, greeting that I get, but it's, you know, probably second. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's a thing that just happens in your life. Yeah. So. All right. So uh, let me just make this roll. Okay. So the uh, bulwark, you, you have your action still, right? Which means you can choose to make an active defense, um, which you actually, um, if you look at your you have mm -hmm. a secondary defense, which is a block to body blow, um, yeah. if you want to like defend yourself and just like tackle them, right? And how, I mean, it depends on where they stop. If they're still really close to the building, I'm probably not okay. going to do that. Um, I think I will try to um, lure them further away from the building. Um, and I'll use my impervious. Oh, uh, don't worry. They didn't roll high enough to, oh. to hurt you. Okay. Well, then I will just like kind of take it, but I'll put up my arms like... You know, this is like like it is bothering me, and take a uh -huh. step back, making it look like I'm giving ground to see if I can lull them into security to come out further from the building. All right, do you want to call that your your provoke? Yeah. All right. So the way provoke's going to work is they're going to want to focus on you now. Mm -hmm. right? They're actually going to get to use their provoke against you, but they'll take your provoke as a penalty against anybody else. Okay. Right. Um, but yeah, so they, they shoot at you um, and they rolled under your defense, right? Mm -hmm. I, I roll pretty um, but defense in when we, we talk about this in a comic book setting is to the character, right? So for like Knox, it might mean evading the blows. For Bulwark, it means you got shot and it didn't mean anything. Right. Just so we can kind of visualize what that mm -hmm. means for you. Yeah. So like in this case, instead of trying to be intimidating with it, like I said, he's going to kind of like, like make it look like they're hitting or, or hurting. They're hitting, obviously, and kind of just shield um, his face a little bit and, and take a step or so back. Um, and uh, yeah, that'll kind of be his action laying in wait. Just kind of falling back as they, like, fire on him? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Technica. Yes. <laughs> okay, so obviously I see these bad guys coming out of the museum. Yeah. And shooting at uh, Balwark. Um, hmm. And at this point, you have a, a minor mob of uh, scrap minor. templates. Okay. Which minor? Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Not technically. Can I do anything with these grunts? Are there specific? Um. So the way the grunts work is uh you can you can have them do whatever you want right okay uh they have a basic role they 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 don't have a full character sheet okay yeah so um their, their basic role was their role to do anything uh and then they have a role for offense and then they have a a meddling ability which is they can just mess with people in whatever way you describe and inflict a minus four penalty on all their actions, right? Okay. So those are like, uh, like you can attack, you can do anything else with the basic roll, or you can metal, right? So, okay. So uh, feel free to get as creative as you want. Okay. And am I able to like split the pack? So like keep some with me and have others go do something else. Um, if you if you uh, if you split them up. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to resolve them as single scrap tech runs instead of as a minor mob. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so... You can see how they work better as a group. Yeah. Um... Hmm. I got, like, too many ideas I want to do with them. <laughs> okay, um... So I was thinking since they are attention on Bulwark, shooting at Bulwark, I was going to have them try and uh, maybe not sneak up on the group of bad guys, but like go up to them and like try and um, not distract, but uh, hamper them. So like grab at the guns or try and like grab at them, hold them, grapple them so they can't move, uh, try and steal the guns away so they don't have any weapons anymore. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to ask you the question. Do you want to have them like take a disarming action or just apply that meddling which is just a minus 4 to anything they try? Um the disarming action is more difficult, but maybe I mean you're taking their guns away, so yeah. <laughs> the the payoff may be great. Okay, I'm going to try the disarming. Okay. So go ahead and roll your your minor mobs offense at a minus ten penalty, um, okay. and then you can use your willpower if you want to like uh, explode their dice or anything like that. Okay. So. Do I have to decide that before I roll? Yes. Okay. Um. Um. So I I know we are in uh, the age of meta currency when it comes to a lot of games. Uh, one of the things that uh, we tried to do with the meta humans rising uh, uh, willpower is you can do a ton with it. Uh, you just have to, you know, take the risk ahead of time, right? There, there's not a lot of, um, um, like, a, look, there's no reroll mechanics or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And for willpower, I don't know if other people are wondering, um, does it come back easily or, and at a certain amount of willpower, does that actually affect the character? So, uh, the way it works is um, at the start of every session, it resets, right? Automatically. Okay. Right? Okay. But in addition to that, you earn willpower whenever you trigger one of your drives or your catalyst, right? Okay. So that uh, we um, we actually gave Bulwark some willpower earlier uh, mm -hmm. for triggering his, his not a monster, but uh, actively trying to protect the museum from himself. Okay. Right? Okay. So if there's, if there's something you feel like uh, works, um <laughs> like if you want to get dark there's this justice and law are not the same drive mm -hmm. but uh, uh i'll i'll leave that up to you but uh yeah so you're gonna try and disarm and then did you want to spend willpower with this role and if so what are you doing with that okay um one tiny second okay uh Okay, I will spend one willpower, and uh, I didn't read this enough. <laughs> uh, I'll go with explosive roll. Okay. So that okay. Yeah, that, that's kind of like the easy. I I need to improve my roll. I don't know what to do. I'll explode the dice. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, minor mob. Okay. So you have a 22 plus 3 dice. Yeah, okay, so... So, 31, and then I explode the dice, so... Uh, so 40 in all. No sixes. Alright, so not only are they disarmed, but uh, your grunts now have their guns. <laughs> oh, the fun I can have. But, but that was their turn. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's check in on Knox. Okay, so what's the situation now? Um, are they still there? Like... Well, yeah, there's still five guys there. They, uh, um, they know where you are. They are scared. Uh, but they, they will be able to fire on you next turn if you don't uh, hide again. Uh, 
let me just go ahead and like drop now this this body at them um sort of in their direction i won't like i'm not like throwing it at them just uh just literally dropping them dropping this body on top of them um maybe one of them might try to catch it or something who knows um and I will go stealth because I do not want to get shot by five people. <laughs> so. Do I need to roll my stealth? Uh, not really. <laughs> um, no, no. You are you are like as long as you are spending the action to hide from them, they're not going to be able to find you. And uh, you know, I might as well just start making my way out of this museum because there's not a whole lot more I can do here. Okay. Um, so that will that will prompt them to go out, but I'll, I'll get to that on there. Well, it is their next action. So yeah, as you exit, they're going to to follow the darkness and hopefully be able to spot you once you're outside. Um. With that said, I, I think that we are we are kind of drawing to a logical conclusion here uh, because the the um, the soldiers that are outside are disarmed, right? Uh, so I, I'm going to ask Bulwark what it looks like for the the remaining five soldiers when they get here. What what have you guys done to restrain or or uh, impede the the five guys that have been disarmed at this point? Um, well, I, uh, Bulwark would take, um, basically bits of, uh, strips of metal off the tank and wrap them or, or like wrap them around them so they can't go anywhere. Um, like break off an axle and like bend it around yep. them. Um, and, uh. That's that's the route he would go. I don't know what Technica would do. The guns are pointed at them. <laughs> there we go. I mean, we, we can feasibly say that, that Technica is uh, is making more of these scrap grunts and, and they're pointing their own guns at these guys. So. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think... Uh, when the remaining soldiers get out there, they're going to see that this has definitely not gone their way. And uh, 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 concede, uh, concede to superior forces here. Or, you know, however, how, uh, you're not a higher number, but I still think it's called superior forces. Yeah. <laughs> um, you get the idea. Perfect. And I think that that brings us to a perfect time to take our uh, break. And uh, when we come back, uh, so we'll be we'll take about five to ten minutes, and then we'll be back to finish up uh, this session. All right, everyone. See you in a few.
We are back uh, from our break, and we have plans, and we are going to, well, start with the wrap-up. All right. So so in the, the aftermath of all of this, um, the, the police eventually arrive, and then seeing what you've been dealing with, uh, a special division of the, the FBI, the, the MCPD, um, that's the, the Metahuman Crime Prevention Department or Division, uh, will also be on scene. Um, there is a, uh, a, uh, 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 field a field investigator Kirkman who will, will ask you what happened, right? Um, and, 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 uh, yeah. He's a, he's a sharp dressed man who, who wants to know what went down. Do we want to debrief in the same initiative order? Uh, you, you guys are, yeah, we can do that. So we can start with Bulwark. Uh, Bulwark will, because of the, what he saw, he'll, he'll give um, them information regarding the tunnel that they came out of, um, as well as what he knows of the Eisenreich from his past uh, run-ins with them. And um, basically say all that, all the, all of the members that he saw are accounted for. And that's kind of how his report will go. Okay. Uh, well, he's definitely not happy to hear that there are Nazis in Central City. Um, but this is the first time he's heard about their activities, you know, in the area. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Technica, what, what do you have to add to this report? Um, they were easy to take down. I don't know. <laughs> um, knowing her background a bit. I, I guess she would just be like, oh, these are the ones we found, and that's it. There's a few more in the tank. We're going to let them out so they can, the cops can take them away. And But she kind of brushes it off. She doesn't really, there's, she doesn't really have anything else to add. So uh, uh, Agent Kirkman will um, tell you that they are bringing in, uh, something to tow the tank and uh, uh, do you tell him that your scrap tech grunts are made from the tank because he, he notices that it's taken quite a bit of damage <laughs> no I forget to mention that part <laughs> that just that just you know we don't need those details do we no no not at all all right and then uh, Knox, what uh, what what uh, what do you have to add to uh, uh, the information for for Kirkman? You know, I think Knox, like upon seeing Kirkman and knowing this whole division and sort of her past regarding like sort of institutions and and justice departments, um, is a little bit more quiet and reserved about it, not wanting to give too much away. Um, but basically, what Knox will divulge is uh, sort of like holding this cube with like like one side like open um, because she still hasn't closed it up yet. Um, this is what happens when you drop the ball. You see, you she just sort of like catches her breath, trying not to like have a freak out moment can't advertise that you have artifacts in cities like this, yes? And he'll like like go to like she'll like go to hand it over to him and like if if he's like trying to grab it, she'll just sort of like toss it over her shoulder back to Technica. <laughs> but we'll keep hold of this, uh, you know, since you cannot be trusted with such items. So so uh, when you hold it out to him Mm -hmm. uh he he uh he actually well let me rewind 
so you, you mentioned like you shouldn't advertise these artifacts. She's like, I, I mean, I, I'm not related to the museum here, but I definitely understand that they should have vetted this more thoroughly. I, I agree with you here. Uh, you know, I, I just I can't. Uh, you know, we can't prevent people from from displaying these kind of things. Um, yeah, you're the government. You can do anything you want. <laughs> oh, if only. <laughs> And uh, then, and then you hold it out. And he's like, well, I, I'm not comfortable touching that. Uh, we can bring in a containment device if you want to just wait here. <laughs> and I think Nosh would be like, no, we're good. And just that's the moment she like tosses it over her shoulder okay. and hands it back to Technica. Uh, Nox is not really interested in this thing per se, and it looks a little bit too mechanical and weird for her. So. All right. So he, he says, uh, uh, um, um, Technica, we, we will need to take that uh, uh, to to archive it. Um, I could get... Um, Do you really think you can protect it? Yeah. He scratches his head. Uh, I can make it disappear. Do you even know what it does? Not a clue. But I can definitely make sure that no one finds out what it does because we will put it in a hole and put that hole in a hole and that hole in a box. That's funny because the Nazis come from hole too. <laughs> <laughs> And nothing, nothing hides forever. Well, how about this, Agent? We'll, we'll, we'll figure out just how dangerous it is, and then you can put it in a hole, in a hole, in a hole, in a box. It's two holes and then a box, but yes. <laughs> That's what I said. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Like he, he's very adamant about this point for some reason. Like it, it makes you wonder. Like, does he actually have a hole in a hole somewhere? Like, what? Why is he so centered on this? I'm also interested in what kind of box can contain two holes. Um, interesting. Ah, uh, anyway. Uh, this is somebody that we're. We're not unfamiliar with either the agency, if not this agent, correct? Yeah, you're, you're definitely familiar with the agency. Um, and if you want to give me an etiquette roll, uh, we'll, we'll see where this uh, this convincing argument goes. Oh, good so you're just Well, your expression plus etiquette. We're going to take... <laughs> The, we're going to take this evidence and we're going to take it from you now. You guys just handle the uh, the Eisen right now that we're done with them. Well, since I am the prettiest, um, that'll be a 20. <laughs> but there was a 6. All right. So. Oh, could I help him? <laughs> because I have Bargain Finder. Could that help me bargain that we keep it? Is there uh, so a way to do that? Uh, so you you can absolutely assist. Um, Bargain Finder is the ability to find like uh, good deals and stuff like that, like um, like uh, for Technica like she hits junkyards and can find like oh this is a two thousand dollar car that someone threw away. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, but I, I'll tell you what. You can uh, use this justice and law are not the same, right? Mm. Uh, if you want to make the argument that um, while it may be the law to bring it into for evidence, um, it's more, more dangerous to have it, um, or it's more dangerous if we don't find out the source of this, right? Like if you want to make that argument, we'll, we'll go ahead and give that as a bonus. And yeah. I'll give you a little power starting our next session for you using that drive. Okay, yeah, that would that that would be cool. We'll do that. Okay. So um 
he will agree conditionally. Um, he wants to put a tracker on it. Right? Just in case you guys uh, somehow lose it, he wants to make sure that they can find it again. Okay. I'm sort of like lean over to Technica. I think it's right to track her, yes. Mm, don't, don't worry. It, I got it covered. I think we should agree to this. This is a wonderful deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so you guys kind of uh, uh, sort through this. It takes a little while to like handle the paperwork. Like he's writing down, like this has been like conditionally assigned to uh, the Steel Aces and you know, it's, uh, you know, tracking with monitor, blah, 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 and, you know, all the paperwork that has to happen, right? We go full hot fuzz at this point. And uh, uh, in the in the aftermath, eventually it is just like the, the three of you um, standing next to a pit with um, caution tape and, and uh, mobile barriers. Uh, what what is the plan? Like you have the the artifact. What are you going to do now? Well, it's for sure. Technica's already trying to play with it <laughs> and trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, I mean, she she's like looking at it, like, hmm. I I, I want to play with this thing. I would be calling upon Bulwark's his uh, past um, as a archaeologist um, and the education from that that time in his life, um, spe specifically with ancient cultures and Greek ancient culture, uh, to figure out um, more about it. So, kind of study mode, but would have to have like Technica help so he doesn't melt everything. Okay. All right. So there's going to be a moment where you guys are going to head back to your headquarters to kind of study this item and maybe uh, um, kind of trace where it came from or if there's anything else like it. Um, you can definitely um, um, like looking at it because you are a scholar, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're definitely putting this uh work at some time prior to 300 bc although the the metal work is um or the 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 mechanisms within it are too advanced um this kind of speaks to like did they actually have batteries that ran on lemon juice right mm -hmm. uh you know what did this dead culture or what, what did this culture have that we just don't understand yet? Mm -hmm. Right. But looking at the inscriptions and things like that, that's, that's where you're getting your dating. Uh, although we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit further on next session. Okay. Right? And, and uh, just as a side note, you probably know this cause you wrote the character, but he does have the language of Greek and Italian and Latin depend. Well, it'd be Greek in this case. Um, yeah. so, we're not overcoming language issues. Yeah. Um, if anyone's wondering, he, he speaks Greek, Latin, and Italian. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. Uh, since I, like, we wrote these characters years ago. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I found myself just in, like, the last, sorry, this is, like, a complete aside. The last couple of months, whenever I give someone languages, I always list, like, uh, the three that they get from the boon along with like whatever the native tongue is on as well mm -hmm. uh because like writing it like this you know there's this like assumption well, what, what's the base language right um so trying to o overcome those like unconscious biases yeah no i get it uh but yeah we'll, we'll pick up there in the next session cool. um oh sorry go ahead 
I said that that's great, Knox. I or I, I do have one question for Technica. Hmm. Um, if you want to ask Knox a question first, go for it. No, I can wait. All right. Um, so, what does the Steel Aces mode of transportation look like as you're heading towards the Greek Isles? Ooh. Uh, we're headed to the Greek Isles. I imagine. Huh? I don't know how fancy I can get. Uh, you you are uh, someone that can build robots with their brain meats. So that's why I'm asking you what their their mode of transportation looks like. Um, could we have something a bit like um? Oh my god, I'm forgetting the name, but what the X Men have? Oh. Um. The Blackbird. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, something oh. like that. Yeah. We used bulwark as like the firepower to to make it run, or <laughs> we could if he wants to. Yeah. That the way, the like, only the only seat I have is in the engine room because yeah. otherwise I melt things. We pretty much melt. So <laughs> you're you're the firepower of the engine. Like yeah. yeah. He sits on like a lead plate. <laughs> I'm 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 just here to warm things up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's environmentally friendly. <laughs> You know, they told me it was first class. I'm not sure I believe them anymore. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so you had had a question for Knox. Oh. Um, did you catch uh, anything about how they opened it? I, I think they already opened it before I got there. Did he not? Um, you actually saw him sliding the the um, the what looks like um, sigils, like manipulating them. They're like gears. They're just so finely crafted. It looks like it's just uh, if you were looking at it and you didn't know things could move and you didn't know how to start moving them, they never would. So it just looks like um, writing that was on the cube, right? But he knew where to start, or he figured out where to start and was able to begin manipulating this puzzle. I will throw that back out because I don't know the right words to say for that. Um, is this some sort of uh, Atlantis kind of stuff are we talking about here or what? Mm, possibly. It's not something that um, Derek would have encountered in his previous life. This is This is new, familiar, but not known, correct? Right. So there's a there's not a lot known on this particular uh, artifact, but it dates to an interesting time period. Could you emphasize a little bit more about that? What would um, like high level? because I know we're going to get deeper into the details next session. Um, what would um, Derek know about that particular time period? Oh, um, well, let's see. He has uh, area knowledge Greece, uh, uh, study ancient cultures, um, so just as a, a general rule of thumb, a talent, um, like a one to three is like a, a working skill, mm -hmm. right? Um, a, a four to a six is usually someone who has been doing the, the, uh, the job for some time. Uh, and a seven to nine is uh, usually like a senior person or, or um, uh, you know, th these are people that can teach someone else how to do it and uh, do it well. Mm -hmm. And like a, a 10 to 12 is like you're considered an expert in your field. So you have a study of ancient cultures that's at a nine. So you're like, um, before this happened, you probably would have been uh, a well-known archaeologist, mm -hmm. but not necessarily like one of the, the top archaeologists in the world, but definitely in that upper echelon. Does that make sense? 
published a number of things, gets invited to go to conferences within his field, um, not just told that they exist, but may I, may have done a keynote once or twice, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, like he's definitely like spoken at conferences. Um, like he might not have like headlined another keynote speech, but uh, at, at uh, like bigger events, but mm-hmm. certainly like, uh, you know, if he goes to like certain schools, like that's definitely a place for him. Um, you know, he could lead uh, um, uh, a department at any major university. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, so that that's kind of where his, his skill is. Uh, and so that's to, to give you, and I, I say all of that to translate that to, um, I have to do a little bit of homework for next session. Yeah, no worries. Um, but he should be fairly knowledgeable when it comes to um you know the 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 age of philosophy right like uh mm-hmm. you know this is definitely like uh, around the time of plato uh that we're looking at gotcha um i think what how he would kind of uh interpret you know what you've given me and and tell Knox is it's from a time period where there were a lot of there was ample wealth amongst the upper echelons and a lot of uh, wealthy people who wished to solidify power. Um, they would have employed those who were the best minds of their time to create things to help um, maintain whatever status or position they were in. I think we may find that this is one such item. So they use all fancy money to make a little whirly box. Not just make the whirly box, but to infuse it with whatever level of power they were seeking. Um, Once I know more about the box itself... Uh, I, I may, um, and Technica's uh, algorithms finish their um, their run on some of the parameters I gave them. I think we'll have a much clearer picture as to which power they were looking to channel through this or have already channeled into it. Uh, Technica, do you think you could open it? Yes. Do you think we should open it? Yeah, that's 50-50. I really want to open it. I just don't want to implode the world. I mean, it's called Immortal's Cube, right? Uh, what, <laughs> what worse could happen, huh? Implode the world. Mm, and I'll Can either you? grant immortality <laughs> or unleash an immortal. Yeah. I guess, we, we, we established that. Yeah, I'm guessing it's either a prison or a battery. Now we get the battery, we not use bulwark anymore to power engine. That's, that's plus, yeah? Yeah, that, that, I mean, infinite power. That, yeah, that would be good. That, that would be good. Really stick it to Republicans, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> also, side note, Technica did think of it. Um, she would make it that the tracker, the tracker is still tracking back home. Oh, I, I assumed as much. Like, yeah. I, I, like he, he says, I'm going to put a tracker on it. Like, oh, I, go I, ahead. I, know, <laughs> I, I fully knew like that was that was not going to work for them. But they see Technica like turning around and like it's already off. You know? <laughs> oh no, it's not off. It may even still be on the box. Oh. <laughs> its signal like, just I'm, displays I'm wherever Technica wants it. Server and you know. <laughs> also, um, I well, I didn't want to like interrupt, but I was wondering because the cops were going to take the tank, but Technica wants the tank. So I was wondering if there could be a little side panel 
where <laughs> the uh, truck they bring in to tow the tank uh, suddenly has a mechanical power failure and Technica offers to bring in her own truck <laughs> and takes the tank in it mysteriously. Eh, poof. Well, I, I think they would figure that one out. But, yeah. but uh, let, let, me, let me offer you this one. Okay. Uh, as, as it's being loaded onto the truck, the little scrap tech drones are walking off of the truck. Okay, yes, 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 that works. <laughs> Like they're just kind of like sneaking past the people that are loading it on the truck. They don't realize that the tank is disassembling itself. Yeah, and like you, you see Technica like with her hand in back of her back, just like waving them, like, get, hurry up, keep moving. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Love it. So as we're somewhere over the Atlantic. I think that's that's where we're gonna punch out is like the mm -hmm. the, the three of you on your on your uh, supersonic jet heading towards the Greek Isles, and we may we may do like a flashback uh, for some research at the start of our next session. Mm -hmm. But I think that's our punch out scene. Okay, sounds good. With Bulwark sitting on his lead plate warming the engine. <laughs> <laughs> My camera I... to cut up, but I have him sitting there like a the thinker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's still, you know, has fine or he's finally accepted that they call him geothermal behind his back. Um, it's not all we call you behind their back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you to the audience. Thank you to uh, Dave and to uh, Josh and Rin. Um, appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and do a round of outros, uh, starting with Dave. Tell us who you are, where we can find you, and, um, yeah, what kinds of things you are up to. Uh, yeah, so, um, again, uh, I'm the, the writer of Many Humans Rising. Uh, some of my other games include Fractured Kingdom, and uh, during the process of the pandemic, we had a little burst of creativity and released a, a supplement for My Humans Rising called the Burning Earth Arena, uh, which is like an alternate reality, Mad Max kind of post apocalyptic future. Um, so we we write a bit. <laughs> um, we, we're also working on um, a, uh, a web comic the, for the Steel Aces. Uh, you can find that at House Doc. That's dok.com along with a ton of web enhancements for metahumans rising including uh adventure seeds um not this one specifically but there's like 20 others um that are on there ranging from uh dealing with uh very mon like uh corrupt cops to uh undead fey warlords right so we got quite a variety there uh, for your palette, along with like character creation uh, materials, um, like different different uh, other enhancements to help bring your games to life. Um, <clears throat> we also have a Patreon, which is uh, patreoncom slash metahumans um, You can find me on Twitter with um, House Doc. That's again D O K Pro, and then uh, we're also on Facebook. Uh, if you just look up Metahumans Rising, you should find us. Um, I think it's facebook.com slash metahumans or it's either facebook.com slash metahumans rising or slash group slash metahumans rising however, however that works out yeah. Right? yeah I think it's just I don't think the group is necessary uh, I put uh, the, the uh, patreon and the house doc.com in uh, chat for everyone so there are links there uh, you can also find the uh, book itself on drive through RPG it's currently at a uh, pay what you want because Dave and um, cohorts realize that during the pandemic right now, things might be tight for some of you. And it's their way of saying, hey, have some fun while the world is on fire. So, uh, Rin. Yeah. Remind us who you are and where we can find you. Hey, I'm Rin. So you can find me here. Uh, I'm playing in Malifaux. Which is a uh, dark <laughs> western, post-apocalyptic western. Anyway, it's it's cool. 
check it out. It's a really fun game. And otherwise, I play in Cyberpunk Red. It's crazy ass jinx. Um, both of those games will be coming back. Don't worry. Yep. We're sorry, but they're coming back. Anyway, otherwise, uh, at Heaven's Night on Twitter, or I do uh, write fiction for my characters. So I will post the link of my website there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, back to you, Josh. Hi, everybody. I'm Zarek or Josh. Um, and I have been your player and your best friend. Uh, you can find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv. Um, I think there's a few episodes of the last part of our season two of Blades in the Dark on there. Um, otherwise, you can catch the rest of those on YouTube. Uh, we just did a Morkborg one shot last night, which is over there. So uh, if you're interested in that system, go check that one out. Um, Otherwise, if you go to Twitter, twi uh, both also at Saverick, um, with my pen tweet, you can find me over on Itch, where I have a solo journaling game, which is pretty much Silent Hill in uh, love letter form. Uh, you can either purchase that, or I also give away, like, I have like 70 some community copies there. So if you don't want to pay two bucks, and you know, I know everything's tough on people nowadays, you can go grab that for free. Um, also, I have uh, my other game, Cheddar Off Dead, which is a honey heist hack. Uh, basically, you're a bunch of uh, cranium rats trying to invade uh, Sigil's best cheesemongering house. Um, so if, nice. you, uh, if you're into honey heist and you like uh, Planescape or, or cranium rats, uh, it's a fun little game, I think, um, which is also, of course, for free. Um, otherwise, it's all I have currently going on. So great thank you so much and uh i'm chris geary you can find me uh here on uh normally for cyberpunk red on fridays but uh for this week and next is on wednesday and thursday as we're taking over while simon is recovering and um you can also find me on Twitter, at Chris Geary. And uh, right now, I'm mostly spending my time working on uh, Omens Rising, which is a card-based tabletop RPG that is based around um, divination with using playing cards uh, as its core mechanic and uh, set in a science fantasy world. So uh, more of that is coming out. We had a playtest of some of it here on Wondering DM not too long ago. And we'll have two more of them launching in June. One on um, We Are Nerdsmith and the other over on The Hype Goblin. Uh, Saturdays starting June 5th on We Are Nerdsmith and Mondays starting June 14th. Uh, each one is a three-session series. So that's everything that I've got going on right now. Um, thank you all for tuning in and have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.